Hello viewers, and welcome back to our Let's Play of Victory at Sea. I'm your host, Bubuju Chu, as always, and we're back on episode 4. Strangely enough, I don't remember it being a uh, day for once inside the game, but it seems to be a lovely uh, dawn or dusk currently inside the port here with its... Uh, only enough, I mean, this is supposed to be some sort of minor uh, island, yet still it has some sort of uh, HQ for the US Navy and also a fully functioning shipyard. So, I mean, summing up the last episode, we had uh, done some work. We bought the USS Brooklyn here, a massive uh, cruiser filled with, with turrets and guns and just in general things to harm other people. And in addition to unlocking um, the cruiser class of ships, uh, we've also gained access to a few more uh, vessels. Namely, we have a few submarine variants available for us right now, and also a Casablanca class uh, escort carrier, which is able to launch a uh, group of fighter, well, like five fighter bombers or I guess two torpedo bombers and three fighters so that's a little kind of neat though it is a uh, much slower ship to say the least so um yeah we've uh, we've definitely unlocked a lot of the different little game bits and bobs here and there now and well I think what we'll do inside this episode is that we'll try to expand grab a few more cruisers perhaps or one of those unique ships and starting off from looks of it we're issued a new order to uh, sink every ship at some um, base from the looks of it so I think we'll just do that and see where that takes us so first and foremost uh, we've given we've been given the objective of sinking all the ships at uh, Kava Jelen Atoll and checking over the map that appears to be just inside this little cluster of uh, the remaining three Japanese outposts. So um, why don't we just bag all of these three in order and uh, see whether or not that um, adds to our funds by, by a bit. Oh, and uh, I guess they have uh, some of the historical speeches present inside the game. In infamy, United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Yeah, that was the uh, the speech in were in reaction to uh, Pearl Harbor and all. And it's kind of nice that they've uh, included a bit of that inside it. And um, well, I, I guess technically, I mean, we're already at war with the Imperial Japanese forces there, so we're the Empire of Japan, so don't really know why that um, just played, but all right, seeing as how, I mean, there's no date inside the game. Um, but checking it over just briefly from the looks of it, I mean, Pearl Harbor seems to be intact, so it doesn't look like that was, that did anything on the campaign map. Uh, but nonetheless, it looked like that was a, a nice touch, to say the least, there. So, um, starting off, I think what we'll do here is that we'll get rid of this uh, supply fleet first and foremost, and afterwards we'll see what we can do about attacking the port. So, um, let's see, what can we do here? You know what, I'll get all my ships to just uh, buzz about and get the, the two carriers, or yeah, the two cruisers, I want to say carriers for some reason, to duke it out. And we will, uh, well, put the USS Brooklyn hopefully up against something of its uh, equal class, hopefully. And we'll see how that goes here just uh, shortly. Speaking of which, we have entered range, so I'll slow this down back to uh, times one speed. And well, then we can get a few of these uh, shot exchanges going back and forth here. Starting off, but to get some more, uh, I think these are six inch guns, I want to say. Fired off, landed a nice direct hit, didn't do any subsystem damage, which is rather unfortunate. Swing the ship about, get the uh, side guns firing here as well. Main guns firing volley as well. And ooh, our rear guns can also hit them, so I'll get those to fire off as well. Now the thing I'm sure all of us are waiting to see is, uh, is this volley of uh, secondary guns, seeing as how we'd be uh, firing a volley of eight of those nasty little cannons at the, uh, the enemy at once with those things. I'm going to see whether or not we can close up to uh, unleash the beast that is the secondary uh, barrage that's coming from the port and starport side. Starting off, um, swing right by, fire this thing off, and ooh, that is just like a shotgun barrage. It's going to hit, hopefully, <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's going to hit the ship and just nicked it with one of those shots. So those things aren't, uh, yeah, they're not too accurate. 
to a large extent, and I guess that's reasonable for something going at its maximum range. Though, I'm gonna do something a tad risky here. I'm gonna try to close up on the, uh, the Nargara class cruiser here, get real nice and uh, snuff with it, and I'll see what we can do here about unleashing a full barrage to finish this thing off. So, we'll do a bit of a turn. I'm not really sure if these uh, secondary lines here inside this blue zone indicates anything, but we'll fire off a full barrage and that's gonna take it off. Though it looks like only, uh, yeah, two of those hits actually, uh, were rather, two of those shots uh, were, yeah, only two of those rounds had actually uh, hit that ship, so that is slightly disappointing. But nonetheless, I guess, um, it worked for to uh, to our advantage if that ship if the USS Brooklyn was firing on perhaps a bit of a bigger target where there'd be uh, of course more um, space for for our ships to land those shots in. Got that nice uh, little torpedo move there. It's gonna happen again once more. Oh, we actually had a few dud torpedoes on that run. It's gonna happen a third time, bringing all of those convoy ships down to the bottom of the sea. And we got a nice sum of 1,662 uh, war bonds from that, or what, million six hundred thousand and some such war bonds, so that bumps our uh, payroll up nicely. And well, let's just uh, swing back here and invade this uh, island, I guess. From the looks of it, there's only one passive defender here. Hopefully that'll be just one, another one of those little uh, torpedo boats. Um, and, well, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a Fubuki class destroyer, so nonetheless, that isn't, say, too uh, threatening. So I think we'll just start off this battle. And this might be just a, uh, a battle that I can just solve um, by letting the game time roll here. So we'll see whether or not that... Uh, that can be ju done just that. And to just recap, I mean, I think we've already seen one of these uh, troop transport missions in along with our fleet inside these is a nice stream of uh, these little um, landing carrier ships. And these things are just gonna go passively from one side of the map to another. We can't actually control these. Um, and all we had to do is just effectively escort four out of the, the eight, I think, that we have over here to the other side of the map. So yeah, it's not gonna be too hard with uh, one destroyer guarding the way there. Um, speaking about these small craft, I mean, in theory, we could just let the uh, the game run at this point because I highly doubt that the um, the landing craft, like there's just so many of them compared to the one Japanese destroyer. So I, I think that there's, there's definitely a solid chance for them to just get through on them uh, on their own, on by themselves really there. And are we going to see a nice torpedo blow there? And yes, we are. So that'll be another quick battle and another port taken. So perfect. That should also uh, bring up our payroll by a good half million from the looks of it. So that's not too bad. And we've unlocked two more of these things. The illustrious class carriers. I think that one was uh, one of the boats that we had seen inside the, uh, the battleships and carriers preview. And in addition to that, the independence class light carrier. And perfect, we also now have the good mission there, so that will be uh, just that. Right, so Poland's port here will um, get our stuff re uh, repaired and all that. And in the meantime, I guess it'll be time to stop by once more to the shipyard to see some of the new uh, unlocks that we had just picked up. Um, but unfortunately, from the looks of we are just... Uh, a good amount of money short from buying some more of these... Uh, ships, which is rather unfortunate there. Um, taking a look at some of these new ships, we have the Independence Class Carrier, something that features a whopping 29 points of health. It launches, I want to say, a even load compared to the Casablanca class. Um, over here, that it has the Casablanca has 11 hit points and two armor. I think the other one had three, and it features two torpedo bombers and three fighters. This one features four uh, fighters, but two um, torpedo bombers. So it's, I'd say. Yeah, roughly equal in attacking power, but slightly lacking in defending power, or 
It's already the opposite way around. Slightly uh, better in defending, but uh, not work. I'd say, I guess, kind of equal in attack, if you don't uh, consider the cannons as uh, usable things on those. And then, moving forward, we have the actual uh, full-sized carrier, I guess. The Illustrious with four of those F4F Marlet fighters and three torpedo bombers and a set of cannons, in addition to having the, uh, the little port and starport guns on it there. So uh, that is just that. Those ships are a little out of our price range from now. And from the looks of it, we had picked up one of these convoy missions. So let's see if we're supposed to export this thing all the way back up to where we had originally started inside the episode. So that shouldn't be too bad. So I guess we'll just follow this fleet as um, as we go here and see uh, what threatened us them. trying to figure out what the speech is saying in the um, yeah I don't think we'll be able to hear that there's that uh, passive clanking sound um, but anyhow I guess today we'll be checking out uh, rather inside this battle we'll be checking out one of these convoy defense missions so uh, from looks of it yeah the roles are reversed now so in theory, we have to protect our uh, little cluster of like cargo, cargo ships over there. Um, but seeing as how the only thing attacking us is a single Japanese cruiser, that should be uh, quite an easy mission to say the least. So we'll see what we can do. And uh, well, hopefully we can uh, just really muck up this other cruiser with our USS Brooklyn here. So that'll be that. Um, inside that little audio clip, I think it's some sort of like radio broadcast by uh, by Winston, Winston Churchill, the uh, the leader of Great Britain during World War II and all. But I just uh, you know I couldn't make out anything apart from the distinctive sound of his voice inside that uh, little snippet there. So I don't know uh, whether or not somebody else heard that clearing clearly enough going out of the uh, whatever sounds were also there some, some sort of like sawing slash I don't know building generic sounds like that stock sounds like that there uh, but anyhow I guess we'll just try to finish off this guy our guns seem to reload really fast on the uh, Brooklyn here I guess we'll try to use that to our advantage. They're going to turn around to the side. We're going to do exactly the same thing. And we're going to see whether or not we can put some two more batteries onto them. They're going to launch torpedoes at us. Oh no. Let's see. They're dropping a volley of, I want to say, two torpedoes right there. Funny that our bullets are where our uh, shells are at the exact same location right there. So let's see what we can do here. I'm going to issue a harsh turning order to our ship. And I'm going to lower the... Uh, the speed here and there we go that's just passed and from looks of it that was actually a volley of yeah four torpedoes so that would have been quite deadly if it had, had uh, actually hit so um, that cruiser shouldn't pose much of a threat now that it doesn't have those torpedoes and we got a nice hit there crippled two weapon systems or at least damaged uh, two of them there and we'll see what we can do about socking them further and they should also be, yeah, indeed, in range of the uh, the secondary guns. We'll get those off too. And that one, uh, that one hit from the looks of it. Yeah, it uh, seemed to hit with four rounds, with four of them going off into the back there. So that wasn't too bad. And let's see, we got another message from the uh, from from the Admiralty, and we had oh. That's cool. We managed to capture a Japanese-class uh, destroyer from the looks of it, and we uh, we gained a free destroyer off of that battle. I thought it would have been another one of those virtual metal things, but yeah, now we get a fifth line of, or yeah, fifth ship for us to use here. Um, so that is that is very neat, actually. I didn't know that they um, they had a policy of capturing those ships as well and using them for themselves um, but that is that and we'll just finish off um, yet another little segment there right so in the meantime we'll head back uh, back to base I guess I'm gonna see what it can oh <laughs> the two fleets just bounce off each other if the um, if the, like if the flagship model hits hits each other that's that's hilarious I think what we'll do here is I will put um, yeah our ship back into port. We'll let the thing do its auto saving um, 
Dilio here, and we'll uh, check out our newly um, gained destroyer here in just a second. I think the game might have uh, frozen up. You know what, this would be also a pretty nice place to take a break, so I'm, I'll just uh, leave here, and I don't know, maybe I'll have to task manager the game, but you know, be sure to like and subscribe as always, and I'll see you guys back in episode 5 shortly.